seems legit. Hello legitimates and welcome back to my channel. Boy have I got a bag for you today. Now this is super fun, super awesome, but it is a big project. Uh, so this is the Sophisticated Crafts latest pattern. It is a very awesome tote bag that is convertible to a backpack, which I have the cords here somewhere. I did just have them. Uh, so we've got the handles, we've got a slip pocket, and then in the slip pocket, it's got a magnet and it's got another zipper pocket there for like super hidden stuff. This back is both a pocket as well as the sleeve to go over a suitcase. And then both the sides have these elasticized pockets that are kind of cargo-y. Uh, it's got a recessed top zipper pocket. And then on the inside, I have just done them as slip pockets, but you can turn one of these into a laptop sleeve as well. And then there's another zipper pocket. This has got so many pockets. Um, and I love that it is in fact convertible, even though I don't know where I just put the strap. Oh, there it is. It fell down. So for the strap at the back, we clip one side onto our D-ring at the bottom here. And then we just feed this through here and then back down through here. And then onto our bottom clip here. And now it's a backpack that you can remove. So it's got handles, backpack. You can also use it as a crossbody as well. You just attach it to there instead. Uh, so multiple ways, super awesome, but it is a big project. I actually did this over two days because I had some stuff come up, uh, but I do love it and I think it's amazing. So let's get started. Right, I have my laptop with the instructions because I haven't read through them. I figure we'll just go through it as we go through it. Um, so I'm starting with two zipper pocket pieces and I'm using waterproof canvas so I don't have to interface it. And then we need, we're doing a lining piece. So these are, this piece here, you need one exterior, which I'm gonna do vinyl and then have accents of pretty fabrics. And another lining piece. And I've got all my pieces next to me. I'm gonna try and be organized. So, on the back of this, we need to roll up. We measure down from the edge, like so, and then I'm going to do a half inch hole. Now if you're using size 3 zipper, you want to use a 3 8 inch hole. And I always just do 3 quarters of an inch from the edge. That's my personal thing. I'm sure the pattern tells you exactly what to do, but that's how I'm doing it. So we're going to line this up. And it is, let's see, just under two inches. So that looks good there. So I'm going to put them right sides together. I'm going to start in the corner here, hold them level. You can even add a clip if you need to. I'm going to stitch two stitches forward. I am on a two and a half stitch length. Well, I am now. And we're just going to stitch the two together. And I'm going to try and have good posture so that I don't damage my back like it was. I had to go and get a lot of uh, massage and cupping to fix my shoulders. So I'm trying to make a solid effort to always sit with my shoulders back. It's not necessary. I feel weird doing it, but it's ultimately for the good, the greater good. So that's what I'll be doing. Oh, I dropped it. Of course I did. I'm going to cut off all of the tails. I put my bin back where it lives, which is going to make my life much easier. And you also want to cut this little jump stitch here. It just helps when we cut through the hole. I also today, this morning, went and got new scissors. I missed these scissors. The last pair, the first pair I broke the spring. The second pair, the geckos ate the handle. So they're going to have to live in a container but I need good scissors. You can't sew without good scissors. I feel like that's a big part. And with how many bags I make, good scissors really are handy. 
if you've never used these spring-loaded ones before, the way you hold them, it does take a minute to get used to. Uh, and they're not great for left-handed people. I had two people at the shop try them out because I was talking about to the people that work there how good they are. For left-handedness, you get like a blunt spot because of the pressure you put or something. I don't know. But for right-handed people, epic scissors. And they're on sale at Spotlight at the moment. So I'm going to just finger press that up. Now, if you're using all cotton, you're going to want to iron this. I'm going to finger press this side down. And then just since I'm here, I'm going to put a little crease in the sides. We didn't sew the sides because it's just easier not to. But if you put that little crease, it will help. And then I'm going to push the whole thing through. I always take my thumbs, push the sides It's kind of like a Tory pocket that's split in half. So if you've got a directional fabric, this will work for you. Uh, finger press it down like that. It's flat enough. It'll survive. Now we need some zipper tape, which I put in my tub. I've just got a big roll of it. So you want to have it the same width as this and then we're going to use these are now my zipper scissors they got downgraded because they're blunt as you can see look they're not cutting <sighs> they're not cutting anything there we go and we're going to put a, a zipper pull on I'm going to go with gunmetal just because it's like a bit of a boy themed bag not that girls can't have trucks, but generally speaking, if someone's buying this, it's probably because they have a boy baby. So now, with right sides up, which is the long piece, we're going to just place this over the top. Now, you can use double-sided tape to put it in place if you want to. I'm not going to. I've got this. I'm just going to kind of hold it. So the teeth just want to be in the middle is the best way to describe that. I'm just gonna start here. I just need enough of a space so that when I come back around, I've got somewhere to zip it. You don't have to start right in front of the zipper when you've got a bigger zipper space like this. And then we're going to realign this, put the zipper in the middle and continue sewing. I'm gonna get just in front of the zipper Put my needle down, lift my presser foot up. I have a knee lift, it is the best thing in the universe. For anyone that's never tried one, you should. A lot of domestic style machines, you can now get knee lifts. It takes a minute to get used to if you've never used one before, but it is amazing. And then we're just gonna come back to the start and I'm gonna do two stitches and then back stitch. And that's just gonna lock in everything. You can also pull them through to the back if you want to. Yep. Right. So then we're going to, you can either have a little one like that, but I'm going to get the other piece and stick it to the back. So, right sides together. And I'm going to, are we leaving the bottom of this open? I'm not sure. We need to leave at least one zipper pocket open, so we may as well do it to this one. So I'm going to turn it so it looks upside down. And I'm going to sew the sides first, from the bottom to the top. I'm just going to use 3 8 of an inch seam allowance for this. So far, seam allowances haven't really mattered. You could do half inch here. You could do quarter inch, although I never think that's enough, in my personal opinion. Fold this down. Line these up. This is easy to line up because it's waterproof canvas. Needle down, pivot, fold this back, sew it all the way down, and back stitch. I'm not sure if I meant to close it all the way or not. No, just leave it open. Okay, so then I'm going to put the zipper in the middle. The reason for this is if I have it here, there is a very good chance I will sew it into the seam. 
If it's in the middle, it's not in my way. Time for first paste up. Yay! Okay, uh, so luggage sleeve zipper pocket is the next bit. So that bit's done. We're going to set it aside. Then we need piece B3. Here's my piece Here's plan. I'm going to just start making pieces because I've got way too many. So this is A1 and, well, actually it's F1 and F2. Uh, so we're going to make the laptop sleeve which you can just have as whatever. So I'm going to take my fancy fabric and this and put the right sides together. And I'm gonna clip these. I've got a different clip box. My other clips are otherwise occupied. So we're going to put these together. Now, if you wanted to, you could put some foam in here since it is technically a laptop sleeve and you wanted to protect it more. You can also not, you've got options. Alright, so I am going to stitch, I'm still on my two and a half stitch length, we're going to stitch forward and backwards, and then I'm just going to curve down and around, making sure I don't run out of bobbin thread, which I'm sure is going to happen very soon, and backstitch. your tails. Now if you've got them grab your zigzag scissors and we're just going to cut off a lot of this. Not all of it. You want to cut off about half give or take and the reason we use the zigzag scissors is so that the curves will sit flatter when I turn this over. Okay. Like so. So I'm just going to push this back and back and back and back. Now I didn't put um, stabilizer interfacing onto this piece because I didn't want it to be super thick. It's not the, the look I was going for. Now if you want to you can change your top stitching length right now to a longer prettier one but since I don't have a contrasting fab, uh, colour I don't want to. So I'm just making sure that this is right on the edge. Top stitching is important no matter what stitch length you're doing. And I like to back stitch mainly out of habit, but also because it looks good. So now, obviously not on this one, we're going to grab our other interior and put it on there. Which is this one. So, slip pocket onto here. I'm going to use some clips. I'm going to start and line up the corners like so and then I'm just going to add another two here so that it stays where it's told and then oops, make sure you got your clips up the right way. Okay, happy days. That's all sitting pretty nicely actually. So now I'm just going to, uh, within the seam allowance, I'm going to use an eighth of an inch essentially and top stitch this together. I am going to back stitch so that it stays where it's told. Twist. Always twist with your needle in the down position. My bobbin doesn't sound very happy with me. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that, but I can. in there so the bobbin's meant to be wound tight for a reason when it goes all weird and loosey-goosey it just kind of tighten it back up again it helps I promise so I'm gonna hold on to this and do one full rotation to pull out my bobbin now 
because this is a laptop sleeve, if you want to, you can put a strap. I did make the strap, but I actually think I just want it as a big slip pocket because I'm more focused on this being a baby bag rather than an everyday bag. So I feel like the, the little strap here is not necessarily what I'm going for, but it's easy enough to do. Uh, the pattern's there, and then you just find the center, line it up, and put a little snap tab. If I was making this, I would use a plastic snap tab so that it's not going to rub at all against the um, laptop and wreck the finish. But, slip pocket, check. So now I've got, I've got a pocket here, I've got that there. What else do I want to do next? I'm just kind of grabbing at pieces at the moment. I'm looking for my side pieces and then we'll move on. I think we're going to make the interior and then I'll move on to the exterior. And here we go, side pieces, which is piece D1. Side pieces. Pretty sure that's what's going on. So I can just, oh wait, there's another slip pocket here. Where's that slip pocket? We need the slip pocket. The slip pocket's gonna go on this bit, but because we've done this giant slip pocket slash laptop sleeve, for those that are following along with the actual pattern, I'm going to, I can probably just finger hold this together. Each to their own on that. You can welcome to put clips like I did before. If you are feeling confident enough, you don't have to. And then trim off your tails. You want to try and remember to trim all your tails off as you go so that they don't get in the way. Now, if I hadn't have top stitched this down, I would definitely be pinning it or clipping it together. But that's the reason I top stitch. So I do waste more thread, but I feel like it ultimately saves me time because I hate trying to line up three things at once. Now I'm gonna back stitch, pull it out, trim it off. Same with those top tails. We're starting to get an inside. Nice big slip pocket. Again, it's still not too late if you wanted to add the little laptop snap. I'm bringing it up because I'm just, just because I'm not doing it, it doesn't mean it's not a useful thing. But this I am designing to be a baby bag, not so much as an everyday normal person tote. If I was making this in different fabric, the laptop thing would probably definitely be a thing. It's thick there because of the... Um, of this, this slip pocket. I'm just going to cut off half the seam allowance because it's going to help the bag sit nicer later. And it makes the bag a bit lighter. Keeping all stuff that's not so necessary will ultimately make the bag heavier. So you want to cut out the excess where possible. So that's that side done. This side needs a slip pocket. So I'm going to go into the tub of pieces and find the slip pocket. Interior slip pocket pattern, here we go. One of those, which is my beautiful fabric, and one of the linings. So I'm gonna put this one, this is the right top side. And then this waterproof canvas just goes here, like so. I might turn it upside down, actually. Line it up. Again, if you want to, clips, but it's a relatively short, straight line. So if you're an intermediate sewer, try and do it without clips. Challenge yourself. The thing about waterproof canvas is it doesn't stretch, which is why that was a pretty good idea. So then we're going to fold this over, and if you want to, you can iron this seam. I'm just going to finger press it, because it'll be fine. And then we're going to top stitch along here, making sure that everything's lined up nicely. Top edge, line it up. Okay, then 
we're going to take this and just line it up along the bottom edge of this and clip it down. Certain things we clip indefinitely. Some things you can get it, whoops, dropped it. It's almost like I need a giant table because I drop everything. All right, line it up, grab some clips, clip it down. And then we're going to top stitch that down, making sure that we pull the slip pocket out of the way. I don't want to stitch that down because we're going to turn the bag through there at one point. So, top stitching is usually done at an eighth of an inch, for those that don't know that. Pretty much every pattern designer does top stitching at an eighth of an inch. Some patterns you can get away with doing it at a quarter if you're not confident enough in the eighth of an inch. Generally speaking, no, eight of the inch. And needle down. Twist. And back stitch. I know that looked awkward, but now that's free form, so I'll be able to like tuck the ends up and top stitch it flat. So now we've got a slip pocket and a zipper pocket on this piece. And I can go ahead and add it to the other interiors. Trim off those, see I missed some tails. Try not to. I'm gonna do it with this side up. What I'm gonna do, if I can, is move the pocket out of the seam allowance. I don't wanna stitch it down because I wanna be able to turn through later. Having it the whole way across is just gonna wreck my mojo. So you just hold it out of the way. Line everything up and off we go. Back stitch. Trim the tails. I also need to get WD 40. Hear the squeak? It just does that after a while. I think it's going to annoy me and I think I'm going to stop very soon and go and get more doubles of art than probably need more me. I'm going to get fairly close and then I'm just going to pull that out of the way, make sure the top is still lined up. Again, if you're not feeling confident about that plan, you can use clips. It will make it better. That I can promise. And so now we've got this going on. I'm also going to take a base piece. I'd like to pretty much finish this off and then we'll move on to all the other bits. The base piece is definitely in here somewhere. Here we go. Base lining piece. Again, waterproof canvas. And then we're just going to line this up. Now, what you can do is chop out the seam allowance of the corners and it will help you line it up better for those that are new and don't know how to do it this way but if you're doing it the way the pattern has you pretty much that's the wrong way we want to line right sides together people you pretty much just line it up so there's an even amount of overhang on both sides i'm going to clip this otherwise it's going to slip out of place so i've got that much there and that much there clip both the ends and then if you want to, you can add some more clips along that middle part. To stitch this down, we are going to start pretty much at that seam and go across and then stop at the other seam. So there'll be a little bit of overhang in those corners. All right, start at the seam, stitch, back stitch, along we go. I just ran out of bobbin thread. move on to this part because the bobbin was empty and stuff. I've also got interfacing on these pieces so this is my Violin 1050F on the exterior pieces. I've got my tub of pieces here. So we're going to take some zipper tape and using some clips I'm going to clip it 
to the shorter side in here. Pretty sure that's right. Yeah, on the short edge. So I need some clips. I'm just going to go along. You might notice I open it, put it next to that one, and then slide along. The reason for that is, is because it's already slightly lifted where the first clip is. So then instead of trying to like get it onto there, I find that more tricky. So I do it this way. Grab some scissors, preferably your zipper cutting scissors. And snip. So there's that. And then we're going to take one of these pieces and put it right sides together. Now because my lining isn't directional, I don't even have to worry about that. Just clip along as many as you need. Feel free to add more as you go because you never know what you're going to need. So this will be at a quarter inch seam allowance as all the zippers are. And then back stitch. Trim off those tails. And. Da -da -da -da. I'm just wondering, do I baste it? So, I'm going to pull them both back by the look of it. I'm just checking if we top stitch both or one, because that is important. According to the pictures, it looks like we're going to do both. So, pull it back underneath the top stitch. I like to always back stitch, but you don't have to if you're confident in your stitching. I like to stop with my needle in the down position. Makes everything a bit more secure while I readjust this. And back stitch. Snip. Chop that part off there got one half of our zipper. Repeat that to the other side. So line the zipper up in the corner and the opposite corner and then just add clips along to hold it in place. Now if you want to you can do all three pieces at once. I like to do two and then I'll just take this, line it up and add it on. Everybody does it their own way. I find this quicker than trying to line up the three pieces as I go. Personal preference, I could probably get better at it if I tried, but I like this way. Okay, so again, we're going to do quarter inch seam allowance because all zippers are quarter inch. We're going to get to the end at back stitch, pull it out, trim off those tails. Put your pattern piece off to the side. I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to pr finger press that down and then you can flip it over and finger press this one down. You can also iron it if that's your jam. And then I'm going to stitch and back stitch. And because I pre finger press everything, this should go a lot smoother. Now we've got our zipper panel. We want to put a zipper on, and depending on if you've got directional fabric or not, you might want to think about that. I always like my zippers closing to the left, so I've got it right sides up facing me, and then it will slide that way and close over there. So crack the end of the zipper. Feel free to use a zipper jig. I started out as a zipper jig and eventually got used to it enough that I could do it without it. But if you look at my really old videos, I did have a zipper jig. I'm going to kind of put it in the middle so it's not in the way. Then, what's the next bit? Align the exterior and lining to their respective pieces right sides together. So the four short edges. So, we're going to do this. Short edges. Stitch, back stitch, stitch, back stitch. Jump over to the other side. I'll cut that job stitch in a second. Like 
like that. We just snip it in between, cut off the tails. Same again, so put right edges together, right sides together on the short edges and stitch. Stitch and back stitch. Grab the other one, line it up, shove it under, continue stitching. If you can, try and leave like one stitch of nothing in between. It just makes it that much easier to chop. Right, then um turn the exterior pieces right side out and flatten right so like that and then we're going to flatten and stitch across there so first thing we want to do is make sure that this seam is lined up well put that right in the middle of the zip add some clips same with this end. So we're going to flick this over and then line up this seam here with this seam here and then line that up on the center of the zipper because that's where the middle is. Clip and clip. Oh, no I was wrong. Not that bit. That way, so that then when we turn it, we've got no more edges. Okay, so line that up with the zipper in between. There we go. That's. I was like, that didn't make sense because then we'd see that bit. We don't want to see that bit. So flip that one over. There we go. That's more like it. So now from the inside, you won't see the seam and the outside. And then we're just going to stitch it. So I'm going to go forward and back and all the way over. Go slowly over the zipper so that you don't break anything. Other side. Stitch, back stitch, over the zipper. Stitch, back stitch. Make sure you go all the way to the edge. Trim off those tails. And voila. See? No more edges. Then it says to pull it all together. top stitch all the way around so that everything's joined. So because it is a bit of a tight fit, what I want to do is clip everything together. So can see otherwise it's going to not sit properly. Maybe it'll be better doing it this way. Doesn't really matter which way you've got it twisted, so long as we are top stitching, which is all the way to the edge, and joining both the layers together. That's the important part here. I am finding it much easier to have lining right sides up to do this. I don't know why it's easier this way, it just is. I'm sure it's a sciencey thing, to be honest. Maybe that it's just I did it wrong. There's always that option too. So it's lining up better here than it was over there. Alright, so I've now gone all the way around. You don't have to back stitch, this is all just a temporary hold. Done. And it goes that way. That's quite pretty. Okay, now grab our lining. Now I deliberately only, the pattern's different. I'm going to turn the bag through the base because I hate turning things. It's totally acceptable. Um, I'm going to go to the side that's got the zipper and then make sure that this zipper and this zipper close the same way. This is my personal thing I like to do. You do not have to copy if you don't want to, but that's how I'm going to line it up. And then I'm going to clip it together. So we want to do the two side seams first, and then everything else just kind of fits in, as long as you've done the correct seam allowances. If for whatever reason it's not quite fitting in, um, 
there's a certain degree of easing that you can do. So like it looks like it doesn't fit, but it really will. Um, or you can just change the side seam allowances to ensure that it does fit. Because it just means you've either printed it wrong or you've cut something wrong. Either or. Line all the edges up like so. You can also open the zipper. Totally acceptable option. Oops. Okay. So that is now on there. You can stitch it down, but I'm actually just going to leave it on there. And then we can move on to the exterior. Okay. So, pieces that we have. The back panel, I didn't do this earlier. All right. So, this panel is going to be the little slip panel that we put on the back piece so that you can put a what's it called suitcase between it so we need the these and then i'm going to flip one over i went and ironed these while i was doing my bobbin and waiting for my laptop to have more charge these things are indeed important whoops i'm going to grab my ruler top edge draw a line <laughs> Now, depending on what size zipper, if you're doing a size 3 zipper, you want 3 eighths of an inch. If you're doing a size 5 zipper, you want half an inch. Again, personal preference. Both zippers will work just fine. I have drawn my zipper box. So I'm going to line this up here. Along the top edge. We're not going to stitch it together yet. That can wait. And I'll put that there in there just so I don't knock it off. And then we're going to start in the corner, same as always, right there. Stitch, two stitches, back, and stitch all the way along the top line. And then we want to stop when we get to the other intersection. I'm going to swivel it 180 degrees or back in the opposite direction and then start in that corner I'm not going to cut it, that's called a jump stitch we're just going to leave it there it's not going to hurt anybody, we'll trim it off in a minute as long as we back stitch in both directions at all ends it'll be fine alright then we want to start trimming off tails and the jump stitch, you can just chop it in half it's not big enough to get in the way but you can completely cut it off if it bothers you Scissors. Love these things. So I'm going to fold it over. Now, if you line up this edge, when you cut, it will be a straight line. So you don't have to worry about missing anywhere. See that? Straight line. And then triangle out the ends. I do about three quarters of an inch for my triangle. Anything smaller, and it's annoying to have to turn through in my opinion. Alright, triangle, triangle, happy days. Now, finger press it down. If you're not using waterproof canvas, you can iron it. Finger press it down. Turn it through. You can also use the, like, the Tory Pocket style where it's all one piece instead of two, like I'm currently doing also works fine. So now I'm just going to roll it down and finger press it again so that it behaves itself. Again, or you could iron it. Options are yours. Zipper. So more zipper tape. The width of this. Zipper scissors. Oh. I might laser engrave on there and write zipper scissors. Zipper pull. Crack just a little bit of the zipper. Put in one side. I hold it with my fingers and then maneuver the other side. And then push it down from the top. And then before I go too far, I make sure it's even, which it is, so we're fine. 
but it's always good to check. Okay. So I'm just going to lay it over roughly and then bring it underneath, line it up better and go again. We also really want, I want evenness. More than anything, I'm all about the evenness. Now being such a long zipper, you can start anywhere as long as in front of the zipper pull. When it's a short zipper, you want to start right in front of the zipper. But when it's a long one like this, just anywhere in front is fine. Whatever you've got the best handle on, really. Alright, now I'm going to zip this up the rest of the way so it does not distort my beautiful zipper. Line that up. Pivot over the zipper. Other way. Along we go and back stitch. Beautiful. If you've done a contrasting thread, you might want to instead tie it all off. Choice is yours. I'm going to chop off that little bit of extra zipper. Don't eat that bit. It will just get in the way. So I'm going to grab this bad boy, right sides together, and I'm going to stitch side and bottom. Not the top, we'll do that in a minute. So, stitch, back stitch. Again, any seam allowance your heart desires for this part. Needle down, move that out the way, pivot along the edge. The bigger the seam allowance, the smaller the pocket will end up. But in saying that, there's not a huge difference between a quarter inch and a half inch. Okay, so I've done the three. Now what we're gonna do is fold this up and stitch the top together, making sure that your zipper is out of the way because a second ago it wasn't. I'm gonna grab some clips. Clip along the top edge like so, making sure everything's lined up. Do, do, do. Like so. Again, making sure zipper is out of the way, we're gonna stitch and back stitch. Move our way along. Like so, back stitch. Trim the tails. Put your hand in. Turn it through. So we get like a sausage. And then where the seam is, I'm first of all, I'm just gonna press it flat. And then I can pinch it and top stitch along that edge. Now this is where they say not to use anything too thick. There's quite a few layers in there. I would not love to be doing this in vinyl. I can tell you that right now. Would definitely not be my most funnest moment. Then I just want to, from the top down, create a crease and I'm going to stitch the bottom as well. So that is now a slip moment. So when we stitch it to the side, you'll be able to slip it over your suitcase. Right, put that aside too, so that's that one done. Next up, we have, that's a good question. Uh, a very good question. Front slip pocket? Now I've done the interior assembly, we did that. Scoot down, scoot down. Front panel.
Okay, so for this one, we can just right sides together. This one I've put interfacing on. So the lining pieces I didn't, but the exterior pieces I did. You can do it for all of them. That was just my choice. So again, it's a, a Violin 1050F, which is a heavy non-woven interfacing. I like it because it's cheap and effective. Not everything we have to get has to be like the most expensive one. It either means you can sell your products cheaper or have more of a profit, depending on which way you want to look at it. So, trim off the excess like we always do. And then again, oh my hair is in my face. I'm gonna turn that and push out those corners from the underneath. And then again, we're gonna top stitch. You can change your top stitch length. I have it this time just because I didn't deem it necessary. But you can. If this was vinyl, I would be, because I don't wanna over perforate the vinyl or the leather. Set that aside. And then we need to make, this is where it starts getting all tricky, right? So we need the front panel. This is where we get all tricky. This is why I bought the instructions. Side panel. So this is the top panel. So the top panel and the base panel are in fact the same size. Top panel, check. We need a strap adjuster, check. And our strapping, which I am using, where did I put it? Here. I have this fabulous like webbing stuff. So we need this. We also need to have a little piece. Why oh, is that? That's the wrong size. Hold up. Okay, so let's move on to. I found all the pieces. I've also already put my zipper on because you guys have watched me do it. And I have drawn my line. I actually accidentally drew two or oh, an extra line at the wrong size because I was not paying attention. So I've measured it down to where it needs to be and then I'm going to stitch the long lines like we did with all the other ones, back stitch, swivel around, move that out of the way, jump to the other side, stitch, back stitch, and off we go and not knock them off preferably. And back stitch. Snip the jump stitch again. I can take these clips off. Tails off and jump stitch off. Huzzah! So that's now right sides together and done. Grab some scissors. I'm gonna fold that over. So all the zipper pockets are done the same. I appreciate that in the pattern. I'm gonna grab my happy scissors. I love these ones. I know they won't last me forever. I'm also gonna have to start keeping them in a box so that the um, geckos don't eat the handles like the last ones. That was just rude. Eventually I'm gonna find a way to stop the geckos, but not today. Today I'd like to get a bag done. Fold it down and finger press. Fold it up and finger press. Very important step, especially if you're not going to an iron. Funnily enough, this also folds better when it's a Tory pocket because there's more fabric at the top to kind of wrestle with. Like that. And then fold and finger press. You can also iron this. Lay 
lay this over the top, just roughly, because once I stick it under here, it's going to move anyway. Once you go up that, see, the whole zipper just didn't come with us. So long as we get it under the thing here, it's a great start. I'm going to line up the zipper at the end here. Okay, you know what? That's just not working out. So, when that happens, we've got a couple of options. One is actually going to iron this. Two is zipper tape. So this is one eighth of an inch. We're gonna put it right on the edge. Like so. And I'm not very good at ripping tape. This stuff does rip. Oh, I'm just not very good at it. One day I will learn like everything else, but for today we are just going to double-sided tape it down. Like that. Done. Then I'm going to put the zipper in front of me the way I want and I'm going to do the bottom edge first because it's going to be the easier of the two. Because the top edge short, if this was a Tory pocket where it extended up, which you can cut, by the way, just if you're interested, um, this would sit better because there's more fabric pulling at it. It's just how that works. So I'm going to line up the edge there and then make sure this is all folded over. Line the zipper up along here. Then we can take this piece off and wrestle with this side. So this side's going to be harder purely because this doesn't want to sit up. Now again, you could just go and iron it. Very real option. Fold that up, hold it in place, press it down. Ta-da! So now can just go underneath and I'm just going to top stitch the whole way around. Preferably if the thread stays in. That happens, for anyone that's new to this, that happens because the tail wasn't long enough and the needle was on its way up before it was on its way down or like this part here. It's my fault, not the machines. For that, I will forgive it. Pivot across, across this end. Across the end. Now I didn't have to move the zipper, I mean you can, but I didn't have to because we stuck it down with sticky tape so nothing's really moving. But if you feel uncomfortable you can of course move it like I have for the other ones. Your choice. Feels good to be sewing again. I've missed my sewing room. All right, we're gonna grab this. We're gonna stitch all four sides. You can start wherever, but I seem to always wanna start top right. That's just a habit, I guess. And then we're gonna bend that back. There we go. Pivot. the entire time. And backstitch when we get back to the start. And then, if you're sneaky, you can grab all four and throw the tails in the bin. That is now the front bottom. Next up, we need our strap adjuster, which I have just cut a random piece. I'm sure the pattern has the official measurements. I just cut it to look like that and our strap part. So then we need to fold, whoops, fold this in half to find our center because centers are good for everything. Fold it over, a little snip. That needs to be really small because it doubles when you open it. And then there's a measurement. 
on where to put it. So we're going to grab a ruler and a, an erasable pen. You don't have to use erasable, I just am. And mark. And then the other way. And mark. So that is where these are going to go. So this one sits here. So we're going to put it right sides down. There is a right side, I think. Oh, probably not, actually. Either way. I'm pretending there's a right side and putting right sides together. And then this one just goes here. Um, I'm going to use two clips to hold it in place so it doesn't shift because that has been known to happen. Now, funnily enough, you won't really see this bit, but I still wanted it to be pretty. But you can make this piece out of lining if you're running low on your main pretty fabric. And then this one, which is our top, is going to go on top. I don't know why I put the clips away. And I'm going to clip it in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is the two edges because they are the same size and they should fit. Then I'm going to pinch the strap and then just open the clips and include the lining into it. Well, the, not the lining, the top half. Grab some more clips for the middle. There's no such thing as too many clips in my opinion. Again, it is just my opinion. Um, it does say baste them, but I'm okay with not basting them. Uh, take the top panel, right sides together. Stitch, back stitch. I'm going to come back and stitch over that since that part there is going to take the main bulk of the bag. One line of stitching, in my opinion, is not enough. It is a big bag, so it has the ability to hold a lot. So I'm going to come back here, I'm going to stitch forward, needle down, I'm going to pivot the fabric and then reverse. This is never overly neat. Neat is not the point that I'm trying to make. Stability is the point. So you can see I've got like this weird zigzag. It's now essentially given me three extra lines of stitching to hold it in place. So instead of just a single line, we've got more stability in our multiple lines. When you get better at it, you can do as many lines as you want that you can fit. I'm also going to cut those tails off. And then, these all need to go up like this. Do I top stitch it down? That's the real question here. Um, I think I do. So I'm going to fold this down and top stitch along this fabric here. Even if you're not meant to top stitch, I'm going to do it anyway. It's going to help it sit flatter and look prettier. So I do my top stitching at one eighth of an inch, making sure that that seam allowance is underneath. So now I've got another added layer of stitching as well with all the other stuff that I had before. And trim those tails. So that's what we've got so far. I then need my fancy slip pocket I made earlier. And that is going to live here like so. So the first thing I want to do is clip it in place. We also need to add a magnet. Now I'm using rivet magnets, so I can just magnet uh, rivet through the whole lot and install them. If you're not using rivet magnets, please do it the way the pattern suggests. Clipping everything together. Bottom edge. Why am I using so many clips? Because I really don't want it to move and I feel like it's going to try. Sometimes things just don't want to do what they're told. Clips prevent that. You can also see it's sitting up a little bit. Uh, that would be from this, most likely. So I'm just adding clips to make sure that nothing moves when I stitch it down. 
like that. I am now going to baste that. So basting is, for anyone that doesn't know, it's like a temporary hold stitch. So I'm going to baste in an eighth of an inch. You don't have to back stitch for that. But this is also turning this into a single piece, which will be easier to work with later. And then I'm just going to put a little crease right at the top here where the magnet's going to go. And I can put a little mark like so, so I can see where it's going to go, making sure everything is out of the way. I am just going to punch a hole through all the layers as soon as I find my hole punch. Right, so we're just going to pop it under. You can fold this bit over so it doesn't get in the way and distort anything. Hover over the hole punch all the way through. Then I've already got it here. So I've got our two caps. The easiest way I've found to um, separate these is put your finger there, put a thumb on each side and kind of push them together so they crack open. Best way to describe it. We are going to do, I've already put that piece in. So we're gonna go through the base here, pop that on the back. And then again, we're gonna roll that out of the way so that we can get this underneath. Now I find it best if we hang it over the edge a little bit. I just find that way easier. And then we're going to switch to this one, pop it through this hole, cap on the top, swivel it. It's hanging off the edge so it's easier to attach and done. And that should line up perfectly, which it is. So yay. So that's that piece. That is now our front panel done. Next up, we are moving to our, oh, I don't even know. Our side, no, we've done the front. No, no. Scroll down, scroll down. Side panels. So side panels are, side panels here, I'm gonna pop that up there. This one as well. We're also going to need the actual side panels. And the pattern, because it shows you where to put your D-rings. And I think that's about all, and some elastic. So there's elastic that goes in here. Which I do have some elastic right here. I only have white, uh, so that is what it is. People will survive. Do, 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 do. So we need some, I've only got little D-rings. So I think I'm going to have to fold the webbing in half to accomplish this, but that's all right. I've also put interfacing on the back of these. So take piece of this on wrong side of the tab, mark a line with your ruler. This is the bit I'm really gonna have to read the pattern for. Mark a line along the short edges like so. Um, fold the fabric to meet the line. And top stitch them down. Fair enough, I can do that. Exactly like that. And then 
to make my life easier, we're going to chain stitch and do this one too. Fold it up to the line, top stitch it down. Cut the first one off, and then we can chain stitch them. I love a good chain stitching. Like that. Fold the other one to the line, top stitch down. Then we're going to fold this in half this way. No, this way. Sorry, this way. Like this. And place it in the middle of our side panel side pocket pieces. Pop that up there. Alright. So, I'm going to find the centre because again, centre of everything, easiest way to work this. We're going to fold it so that this is going to go. We need to make sure that we want it so that the pattern is right sides up like this. I also need to find the center. Center of everything. Easiest way to measure things. Okay. Like that and like that. So that's how we want it to sit. So we're going to put it right sides down like this. I'm going to clip it in place with a bunch of clips. Well, three. Three's enough of a bunch. And then we're going to take our lining piece and put it right sides down on top. I'm going to add clips to the edge and then I'm going to pinch this so it can't move and then open the clips out and include the lining there as well. We're going to do both of them. So we're going to want that way up so I need to find the center of here like that. If yours is non-directional, doesn't matter what side you do. There is perks to non-directional fabric, but I really do love this one. Alright, so we're going to fold this with wrong sides together, place it right side up just to make sure, fold it over. Now you could fussy cut that piece if you wanted to get super fancy. I obviously didn't, but you could. Sky's the limit. So I'm going to clip that on and then I'm going to take my lining and put it right sides down and add it on. Here and here and there and there and there. Excellent! I can pop that aside as well. Don't need that. With my laptop over there, I feel like I don't have enough space. Anyway, we're going to stitch. Back stitch. And then off we go, making sure we only pull the clips off as we come up to them so that as nothing moves underneath. Stitch, back stitch, clip that off. Then I'm also going to get rid of these tails. Fold this back and over. And... Top stitch it down. Because top stitching is pretty. And then I'm going to finger press that down. Now you can iron this if you're not using a waterproof canvas. It will help it sit nicer. And I can just drag this one straight on through. Lift that up. And these are now our side pockets. Mm. Okay, so we need the center bottom. You can also um, stitch all the way around to hold everything in place if that's more of your thing. Trim and trim. And then If you this is directional, bottom edge, mine's not, so doesn't matter. Grab whatever you want. And bottom edge of this one. Now don't get rid of this yet because I still need the placement of the D-ring, which I will do in a minute. And 
then we are going to place centre bottom with centre bottom, making sure it lines up like that. And then... Where does it want us to meet to? Uh, fold the sides to match the width of the elastic band width. Okay, so all the way to here. So fold that to there, but probably underneath. That probably makes more sense. Fold it under, and then back out. So essentially, you should just clip the sides to the sides. They have to be stuck there anyway. Right, side, side. I've got the middle clip so nothing else can move. Everybody does this differently. Clearly I'm not doing it the way of the pattern, but it'll make sense in a minute because then we just fold it flat at that edge and then fold that down so it matches. And then put a clip on it. So we're just getting like a fold at the bottom. Like so. Ta-da! It's now on. Now you can base that. I will in a minute. I'm just going to also do this one. So you can also just start with the side edge, which is normally how I do this anyway. I don't know why I tried to be different. Sometimes things just work the way you like them to work. You don't have to do it perfectly the way the pattern says, as long as the outcome's the same. Right, so then I'm going to clip the bottom center like that. And then just fold that down like that. Same with this side. Again, you can pre-bend that, I guess is the word I'm after. Squish it down, put a clip on. So now they're going to sit out beautifully, which is exactly what we wanted. Start at the top edge. You can back stitch if you want to. I'm going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch. And again, this, what I'm doing now is purely so it becomes like one solid piece. Over the bottom. Twist. Up. And backstitch. Grab the next one. If I swivel that just off to the side, I can just come straight on in here and chain stitch this side. Now that I've got a swivel, I can cut that one off. Voila. from the first one and we are looking pretty good I don't want to put the d-ring on first but again that's okay too I'll need that here for the placement so what I might do is stab my pen through the placement cross like that and then I can just line this top edge up and draw it on the beauty of paper. I've now got the perfect mark. Although it probably needs to be on the front now that I think about that. Good job me. We'll put the elastic in it as well in a minute. Okay, so I've just got a little mark where the center is. That can now go over out of my way. Now, my d rings are smaller than everybody else's, so I need to think about something that's going to fit in there because the one inch Strapping is not. Let me grab something. All right, I have some skinnier webbing that I can pop through here. So I'm just gonna put it in the center. Now they said to just stick it on, uh, like stitch it down. I don't know how I feel about that. I also would want the raw edges hidden behind it like so. So maybe we'll do that and stitch it on. Although, 
we can be even cooler because this is vinyl what I can do instead is grab a pen draw the line I'm gonna cut that line and I'm gonna have them as like hidden connectors this is just a flourish because of what I'm using I also need to move this so I can get my pen knife I need a pen knife like so. I'm going to cut both the slits right sides up. Do, 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 do. Like that. Then we're going to push this into the hole just a little bit and I'm going to stitch across here. This is going to ensure that it stays nice and firm. It gives extra support, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Then I'm gonna pop this on to here, from the back to the front, and then push this also through the hole. And see, then it becomes something much more minimal and then I'm going to stitch on top. Like that. Beautiful, you can tug on it. I don't think that's gonna go anywhere. And then we're gonna repeat the process with this side. So again, shove it through the hole, just a bit, not too much. I know that might seem silly, but you don't want too much. And then we want to stitch and back stitch. Take that off. Grab my other D-ring. From the back to the front, slide it on. Push it into the hole as well. Nice and taut but not too much if you can manage it. Find like a nice balance there. And then stitch, back stitch, across, back stitch. Lots of stitches to make it pretty and strong. Then the last step is to grab the elastic. I've just, I've got random pieces here. Whoops. We're just going to thread it through here like this. Do, 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 do. It's getting there. It's big enough that you should be able to get it through. Oh, come on. When in doubt, handy forceps are definitely a thing. Put them through, grab on, pull it through. Then it can't fight you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie, not tackle, not tackle, or tack this down to the edge like so, and then we're going to do the same to the other side, like that. Tack it down backstitch out of habit. That was a lot of backstitching there. Probably unnecessary if I'm brutally honest with myself. Trim off that bit. Side panel is now complete. Pop it over there. And let's do this one. I don't feel like arguing with it, so I'm just going to put these straight in. These are very, very handy for stuff like this. I am a huge fan. I got them from a vet clinic, actually. I'm sure you can find them online, though. They are amazingly helpful. Right, tack the side down. Make sure it sits flat, and then tack the other side. You don't want to pull. You don't want it to pull, and you don't want it to be too loose. You can just cut the sizes first. I find this way easier personally, 
Oh, I'll grab the crap scissors, see? They're useless. Oh, whatever. All right, so that's the sides. So now if we want to, we could probably attach the fronts to the sides, and then we'll just do the back. So I'm gonna use clips for this because there's a lot of bulk. If you don't use clips, I feel like it might not work out the way you hoped. You can also add foam right about now if you wanted to have foam in this bag. Oh, do I want foam? It's a very good question. I think I might actually want some foam because it's gonna give it more stability to stand up. So we need to iron the foam, so I'll wait. We won't do that yet. I will make all the outside pieces and then add foam at the end. So, last piece. This is our back panel. Again, it will need foam. And then we need all these other pieces. So this one is our, what's that? No, not that. This one. So this one's gonna hide our strap connections. I made it the pretty fabric. I possibly should have fussy cut that more. Put that back in the tub. So. I need strapping. All right, home stretch. I have cut all the pieces. I thought it would be better to do that off camera. Um, and I've got my little D-ring pieces as well. And my crossbody backpacky strap. The little piece that we made earlier that is for the slip pocket. And we need our pattern piece. So now we just need to transfer the markings from the pattern to here. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that, I'll do the same to the other edge, move it over, mark it, move it down, mark it, top edge, mark it, top edge, mark it, and then we are good. Pop that over there. Okay, so ruler. We need to rule this line. She's important. Exactly like that. It's just light. This is also removable. We also won't oh, see it. Then I'm going to grab the little strap accent and we are going to, on the top edge, measure up the way the pattern says. I did a quick rundown to see if I can do this without the pattern. I have high hopes, people. I'm going to take a double-sided tape, place it on here. It's going to take up most of the space, doesn't matter. We're going to stick this whole thing down anyway, so I'm not worried. Peel off the backing and fold it to the line. Not over it, but to it. Ta-da! Then we're going to sit this on that line there, and I am going to stitch it down. So we're going to stitch, back stitch. Exactly like that. So the idea is that this is then going to come up and cover all of our strappy bits. Now let's make the strappy bits. So you should have two rectangle rings, two little connectors, and your handle. That's what they're in the minute. So I'm going to pop these over and clip it. You don't even have to stitch these. Oh, I mean, maybe we will. Maybe we will just because it'll be pretty and hold everything easier for us. I'm pretty sure I just ran out of bobbin thread. What a terrible timing. Okay, let's try that again. Um, I might even unpick that. So I'm going to chop the tails off. Because there's no back stitching, it should pull apart fairly easily. And then I'm going to grab my sew all and just unpick. Well, that one extra stitch did it. Because it's pretty. And the thread's a different colour, so I want it to look nice. It's going to be like a little accent. So, I'm doing an eighth of an inch, which I didn't tell you that before. Across, needle down, pivot, down the end. Next one. 
Up. Pivot. Across. Now, if you go this way and you're struggling to have the thing behind, what is good is if you go forward, hit the reverse button, and do like two or three stitches, so then when you turn around again, life is much easier. I love that little trick. I don't know if I've ever told you it before. I feel like I have. Then we're gonna grab this, I'm gonna fold it over, and we're gonna do that X pattern. We're also gonna back stitch this because this one, this raw edge is gonna be tucked under here, whereas this one will be seen. So we definitely need to back stitch to ensure that it's strong enough to survive. Needle down. And X is complete. Oh, the back looks a bit weird. There's a tail. The tail, so see, this is called nesting. It's horrible. We need to unpick it out. So when I say unpick it, we're not unpicking the actual stitches, just the tail that's been like sewn and woven into it. Because it looks bad, and I don't want things to look bad. Trim that off. Much better. Okay, so then on this side, we're going to do the same thing, and we want the raw edge on the same side, and I want to have the same amount folded over. So you want them to be even, essentially, is what I'm aiming for. So you can just hold them next to each other and line them up so that they're even. Not a whole lot to that. You can also measure it down. Um, whatever works for you. I find that way easier. If I was doing two lots of handles, I would measure it. But as this one only needs the one, I don't need to measure. I'm gonna reverse a few stitches because the hardware would be in my way and then back stitch when we get to the end there. Now I have a handle. I want this edge up. And let's see. Has this got a thinner gap than the last one? It must do. So that's gonna go there like that, and then this is gonna come up over, and then we top stitch it down so you won't see any of it. It's gonna be all nice and snug. So now I just need to actually measure it properly because that was me guesstimating. And even though I'm pretty good at guessing the center. We still want to do it properly. So, center top, ruler, draw a line down here so that we can see it. You can see my little line. Then we're going to measure out as far as it tells us on the pattern, which I'm not telling you because that's not how I roll. Voila. Then on the outside of that, lift this up, pop this down, make sure that that's going to cover it properly, perfect. And then, if you want to, we can stop, angle, zigzag back, zigzag forward, zigzag back, you won't see this. So this can be whatever you want it to be. And that's going to give a lot of stability as well. Bring it up. Bring it around, make sure there's no twists. So I always bring it up and around, and then down, like so, and then line it up with the line, and then we're gonna stitch, and back stitch at an angle, forward, backwards, forwards, like so. That is not going anywhere. And then we're just gonna fold that up and top stitch it down. And then that hides all the messiness that I just created. Up the hill, down the hill. Up the hill, down the hill. Then, actually I might just take that completely off. And then I'm gonna top stitch the bottom edge so it looks pretty. And then if you want to, you can do more stitches along here. But I, I feel pretty secure in that plan right there. Um, so 
next up is this little piece. It's just going to sit on top. I wonder if there's an actual measurement. I'm sure there is. Higher than that, lower than that. You've got a bit of wiggle room. So that's going to live right there. So I'm just going to tack that to the sides as well. Back stitching out of habit. It's just to tack it down till we get everything else done. Up, down. My brain just finished that song, if anybody knows what it is. Up, down. Can't help it. All right. Look at that. So this, you should now be able to go all the way through and that will sit on a suitcase. The last bit of this is going to be our D-rings. This is not the perfect size for this, but it is working, so I'm going to accept that. So then we just need to, on an angle like so, add these in right about here. Now I want to make sure that I've got enough seam allowance that I'm not going to sew these. And I'm just going to place it there, stitch it down. That will actually be stitched closer when we stitch the whole bag together, so I'm not worried. But like with these ones up here, if you wanted to, you could do the stitch up and around. I'm feeling confident in my sewing skills today, so we're just going to leave it. Now the main part of this is getting the angle right. It's all about the angle. We want it to be the same on both sides if you can manage it. And then we're going to just tack that down and hold it in place as well. And so now that is all the individual pieces done, oh, except our strap. Let's do our strap as well. And then I'm going to pause the video again to iron the vinyl onto the back because I want it to have that stability um, and be a little bit squishy. Who knows what you guys plan on carrying in these bags. So we're going to stitch, back stitch, all the way across, needle down, angle it down, Ooh, missed, fell off the edge just then, that was my fault. Obviously nobody else is here to blame. Okay, so we've got our little X pattern, then with that side up, we're going to thread this on with the flat side up like that and then pull it tight to make sure there's no twists. It's all about no twists with this stuff. Then I'm going to pull it through a decent amount and checking again that there's no twists. I have fallen for it in the past. It's not fun. So now I always check. Even when I'm off camera, I always check, make sure there's no twists. Otherwise I have to unpick and I hate unpicking. Okay, stitch, back stitch. Needle down, pivot down, across, angle up, there we go, and trim all of that, throw it the bin. So the idea is that this is going to clip onto here, and we'll do this end, and then go up through here, down through there. And then clip onto the other side, which turns it into a backpack. So that's how that all works. You can keep it on or take it off. I'm going to take it off for the ironing because the flatter I can get it, the easier this is going to go. But it does fit. So maybe you should check your hardware before we do all of this. Because if your hardware is not going to fit through these, like your D-rings or your rectangle rings, maybe go up a size purely so that you can get your hardware through. Food for thought. I'll be right back after we have ironed everything. Everything has foam now. So this will just give it a little bit more body. Not too much, but just enough. If you are worried that that's not enough, you can also add like a heavier interfacing. But just be aware we still have to turn the bag through. Now, this is already annoying me. So it does go through here so that you know 
how long you need the strap to be like so uh, but I am just going to tuck the whole thing into there so it stays out of my way and then bottom edge to bottom edge with lots and lots of clips so I'm going to start with the bottom edge and I'm going to have all of the clips right sides up this is the easy part from here we don't need instructions I know what's going on now they completely close in the pattern. The, belt, the bottom is completely closed. I obviously didn't do that. That is because bags are easy to turn through large pockets and I've put all this foam on, which I did think I was going to do right at the very start. It's why I left the whole bottom of the bag open, but I also left one of the zipper pockets open. So we're going to turn the bag through the zipper pocket, wherever that may be. Okay. Scooch that over. We are now going to stitch. I really need to get my um, other bowl. This is not working out for me. Now as fast or as slow as you're comfortable. And don't be jealous that I go fast because I did start off going slow if you go back and look at some of my first videos from a few years ago, I was very slow. top to bottom instead of bottom to top you go right ahead whenever I do a maze I know it's ridiculous but I don't start at the start I start at the end and work backwards I do understand that it's the same thing but my brain just doesn't want to do it the normal way such is life stretch of this though. From here I think there's about five more seams. Oh no. Nah, a few more than that. The four on the base. The three on the lining. Okay, but we've definitely got different less than ten lines of sewing. Still counts. Clips in the bowl. Flip this so it's sitting the way you want so that you can stick it. There's eight seams left after this one. No, nine. Now, a little trick. Here's our base. For those who are like, oh my god, I can't put these bases in. Take a ruler and your seam allowance, chop it out. Might seem ridiculous, I promise it will help. Apparently White Stripe Seven Nation Nami is back in my brain. I'm just going to use a little scissors to cut these out. It will just help you fit everything. That one just missed a bin. I heard it hit the ground. Okay, so again, bottom edge. Top edge is where the handles are, just if you need a hand with that. this now that we've chopped those little um, corners out should fit perfectly from the thing the box corner to the other box corner and I'm going to show you what that looks like fits perfectly so we're just going to stitch along we 
also want to hold this up, so I'm going to fold it back. And because I cut the foam down to the dotted line on the pattern, I don't have as much bulk. So if you're on a domestic or a semi-industrial, it's definitely going to help your cause by having less bulk around. I am now going to do the opposite along side. I like to do the long sides and then the short side. That's just me. You don't have to do it the way I do it. You could just do any side you like. We've cut the corners out, so it will make it much, much easier. I usually just stitch it and do a little slit, um, but this is essentially the same thing in the reverse order. Sew it and then cut it. Whatever's going. to pull them together and if you're feeling confident you can just sew it with no no I can't just sew it without clips uh, when you bend it it doesn't necessarily want to bend the way you want it to bend it's fun like that so under we go Make sure you trim off all these tails, they will get in the way otherwise. Fourth side. I'm getting excited, we're so close to the end. Squish it down. Manhandle your bag, it will be fine I promise. If you can't manhandle it the way I am, then it can't be a baby bag. Because some people really fill them up like all the things of the universe which is fine but if it can't have all, a little bit of like grabbing at it like that it will not handle being a bag for someone every day so that's the outside all done we are now going to take our lining and I'm going to turn it right sides out keeping in mind that the whole bottom is wide open for this exact purpose uh, close enough near enough doesn't really matter what we do with that bit so now we just need to find the front this panel here is the front and I want the zipper to close over this side so I'll grab the zipper closure end and put it on that side just shove the whole bag in just roughly doesn't really matter should be right and then this piece goes in the center over here pretty sure pretty sure I'm just going to test that theory by doing a few bits. We're going to fold this in half and find the center because we love the center of everything. So there, clip. And then everything should just fit theoretically. Unless I put it in wrong. There is a small chance that that has happened. Okay, I have. Alright, so I've attached this whole thing wrong. That's annoying. Really annoying. But I will deal. So. To fix that problem. I had to pull it all apart. But. This edge is going to go centre on the side here, like that. And then I can just work it around the edge. So the lining's still here. Don't worry about the lining for right now. I have attached it incorrectly and this is how we fix it. Centre of the side is where the zipper's going to line up there, like that. And then we're just going to work our way around the whole edge until it's all back together again. Making sure that your handles are pointing down and away. We don't want the handles in the way while we're doing this. Because I have an itchy face. 
my uh, hair is tickling my face. Not cool. I'm also making sure that all of the clips face inwards because that's the way I'm going to stitch it and it's easier to pull the clips off when they are in fact facing the correct way. Alright, lining it all up along here like that. Then we are going to take our lining and they line up in the corners to match up with the other seams. And then you just add it into the clips we've just put down. Now again, if you want to, you could have done all three layers at once. I find that messy and unnecessary, especially when I can do it this way much quicker. But if that's the way you were taught or you learned or you taught yourself, then do it the way you like. Add it into the clips. You could have also tacked this on. It also makes me really happy that I didn't um, base that together before because it was incorrect. So now I've got this. I'm going to start. I'm just going to pull off any clip. It doesn't matter where you start because we go the whole way around. There's no magical start stop place. I mean, if there is, I don't know about it. I'm just going to keep bringing it around. It is a 3D item, so we keep shaping it around like this. Drag it around. I'm trying to make sure that it's essentially straight under the needle the whole way around the name of the game for right now. And I've got one clip left. Oh, that just slid out. So that just got stuck on there and wrecked my beautiful stitching. So I'm just going to go back a bit, back up and fix it. Because how dare it be so naughty. There we go. Better. Much better. Now to turn it through should be really easy because the whole face is wide open. So I'm just going to grab a corner and shove it. I'm not going to be nice about it. You don't need to be nice about it. Turning this to a zipper pocket would suck. I mean, there's other ways you can close a bag. You could do essentially a drop-in lining where you fold the edges over. The way I always like to do a bag is make the lining encase the whole thing and then it just kind of falls out. I don't know the science behind that, but I do love it nonetheless. Alright, pulling it through. You can also make a fist and then push it out, pushing out the corner, and the other corner, oh, there's the clip I lost earlier, I knew we'd find it eventually, oh look at that, that is looking much better, excellent, so now it's just a matter of finding the one pocket I left open, which was the lining one, and I'm going to grab the open bottom and pull it through here, like that. There we go, so now you can see it's back to inside out. If again you want to, you can cut out the corners, um, I don't really need to, but you can cut those corners like we did on the outside. And then I'm just going to line this up, move the clips. I probably won't clip this. Purely out of the fact that I don't need to. Like lack of necessity, I guess that is. So stitch, back stitch. I have actually made this whole bag with nothing but the um. What's it called? 
the normal stitch length. You don't have to do top stitching in differentness. Sometimes it's just nice though. So I'm just going to make, because I didn't do the things, I'm just going to make a little snip there to make it more flexible. And then from there, I can just lay this down flat and stitch the short end close. Same with, oh, the start of that didn't stitch. Why not? It's more the end of it, I guess. Can't be another bobbin. I know I've done a lot of sewing, but surely not that much. Make the snip. Keep your needle in the down position, and this last edge you can actually maneuver around and just stitch it shut. Making sure that we back stitch, and then trim off all of these tails. And then you can shove the whole lining back into the zipper pocket. Now I still need to like properly turn out those corners but we'll get to that at the end. So I'm just gonna pop my fingers in here up to the first knuckle, pinch underneath, and then push that inside. You can iron this if you've got like a stubborn fabric. The waterproof canvas seems to bend quite nicely, so I'm not super worried. And we are closed. Trim off the tails. And so then we're going to shove that down. Zip that closed. Push all of that over. Now I think I'm going to top stitch along this top edge because I'm pretty sure that's what's meant to be needed. I'm also going to pull the lining all the way down into the bag. This is quite a large backpack, bag, whatever. Um, but this needs to be stitched so it sits downwards like this. It's the way the bag was intended. So I'm just going to roll it in my fingers, and clip it down, and clip it down. I do actually love the amount of pockets on this, even though the bag did take a while. I can see how it would be super handy. You, it would even be good if you are a commuter and work in the city, it would even be good for stuff like that. You can fit your laptop, you could fit everything, really. I'm putting lots of clips on here to make sure that it doesn't shift while I try and top stitch around it. You also, if you've got thick bits, you might wanna use your pliers to squish them flatter. I should be all right. But if you made this in all vinyl, you're probably going to want to squish it. And down. I'm nearly there. So I'm just rolling it around in my fingers until it sits where I want. And then whacking a clip on it. really like that top closure. Gives my brain ideas of patterns to be honest. But there we go, it is now clipped in place as you can see. I'm going to lift up the needle and then I'm going to start wherever I want because again with the I'm going to stitch all the way around moment. I'm not going to back stitch. I'm thinking I might tie off the tails when I get to that. I always want to try and stop with the needle down, and if not, manually do it down before we move the bag around. It's going to work out much better to do it this way. That was, The stitches won't move if the needle's in the down position. But you want to make sure it's all the way down and not just a little bit, or you are likely to bend and or snap a needle. I learned that from experience. Now I'm doing an eighth of an inch top stitch, but if you're new to sewing, you could definitely do the full quarter. I really hope I didn't just stitch that into the seam. 
We'll find out in a minute, I guess. Did I? No. Good. Needle down. Pivot around. We're nearly there. I'm also going to hold these tails over this way, out of the way. I know you can't see. I understand it's not a very good angle. Not much I can do, unfortunately. I'm going to backstitch through both of them and then trim off all the tails at once. Because it looks prettier. And then, when we zip it shut, it kind of sits in a bit. This one needs to go in there. And we can just tug on that to change the length. And there's the bag done. I know you can't really see it all. I do still need to turn out those corners so that they're sick because that one looks dodgy as. It's not. I just haven't like, poked it out enough. Oh, and I've got my hand in a pocket. I can feel that it does indeed. See, it does want to come out. It's just a little bit more. So we just poke at it until it's where you want. But that is super adorable. It's like Oh, I love it. And then the side ones kind of come out with the elastic and then snap back in. So it's likely to hold everything in place for you. Super fun. Um, I know this was a huge video, but thank you for sticking it out to the end. Um, lots of cool new techniques in this bag. I'm excited to see what my brain ends up doing with it. Um, but until then, I will see you next time.